Scene script. Have you ever wondered about the human rights situation in Tibet? In the heart of Europe, on the 14th of December, 2023, the European Parliament took a bold stand. It condemned the abduction and indoctrination of Tibetan children, who are forcibly taken to Chinese boarding schools. An oppressive regime under the leadership of Xi Jinping has been highlighted with continual degradation of human rights in Tibet. The resolution paints a harrowing picture. It states that close to 80% of Tibetan children, a number reaching around 1 million, are torn away from their families. They are compelled to undergo mandatory education in Mandarin, the language of their oppressors. The opportunity to study their own language, to learn about their own history and culture, is stripped from them. This oppressive act is not just a systematic attempt to erase a culture. It's a brutal assault on the very identity of these children who are forced to forsake their heritage and embrace a foreign language and culture. The resolution does not stop at merely pointing out the oppression. It delves into the impact this forced assimilation has on the Tibetan children. Imagine the psychological and emotional distress these young minds endure. Imagine the erosion of their identity, the loss of their cultural roots, and the forced adaptation to an alien culture. This is an alarming revelation. The resolution raises serious concerns about the psychological and emotional distress suffered by these children and the erosion of their identity. The European Parliament's resolution has set a spotlight on the plight of the Tibetan children, a tragic consequence of a regime's oppressive policies. As we move forward, the question remains, what can be done to protect these children and their right to their culture and heritage? So what does the European Parliament have to say about this? They've taken a firm stance, expressing a strong condemnation towards the assimilation policies in China. The European Parliament is particularly critical of the boarding school system in Tibet, a system that has seen the forceful separation of families and the indoctrination of one million Tibetan children. The Parliament's resolution doesn't mince words, calling for the immediate abolishment of the system. This is not a mere suggestion, but a demand for change, a demand for the stop of a practice that is not just infringing upon the rights of children, but also effectively eroding a culture, a language, an identity. But the resolution doesn't stop at condemnation. It also puts forth a call to action. The European Parliament urges the Chinese authorities to allow the establishment of private Tibetan schools. This would not just be a symbol of cultural preservation. It would be a means of allowing Tibetan children to learn their own language, their history, and their culture something that has been denied to them in the current system. Furthermore, the resolution demands that European diplomats be granted visas to visit these boarding schools in Tibet. This is a call for transparency, a call for the world to see what is happening behind closed doors. The presence of international observers would put pressure on the Chinese authorities to ensure the rights and well-being of these children. The European Parliament's stance is clear. The abduction and indoctrination of Tibetan children is a violation of human rights that cannot and should not be ignored. Their call to action is a beacon of hope for the preservation of Tibetan culture and the well-being of its children. A strong stance indeed. But the European Parliament's actions don't stop there. So, what's next in this saga? The resolution doesn't just stop at condemning the indoctrination and abduction of Tibetan children. It calls for the release of the Panchen Lama, an important Tibetan spiritual leader. This, along with a plea for the Chinese government to refrain from interfering in the designation of Tibetan spiritual leaders, indicates an understanding of the cultural significance of these roles within the Tibetan community. But the resolution doesn't just focus on the specific issues within Tibet. It emphasizes the broader context of human rights violations within China. It insists on the necessity to raise these concerns, particularly those related to Tibet, 
in all political and human rights dialogues with the Chinese authorities. This shows a commitment to keep the spotlight on these issues and to continue pushing for change. The European Parliament has made its stance clear. It has vehemently condemned the oppressive policies and the severe human rights violations in Tibet. It has called for change and reform. But the big question remains, will the European Union member states heed this call? Will they take the necessary steps to address these issues and to hold the Chinese government accountable? The European Parliament has spoken. The ball is now in the court of the European Union member states.